Now this one is taken in, in Exodus uh, chapter 4, being at the end, uh, let's see, uh, about um, 12 to um, 14, 15, okay? And, and I'm going to do the Dan Bome version of the scriptures, alright? So it's a little bit edited. I'm not taking it away. I'm just taking it from the uh, Do American Standard here. Well, let me read that. Let's see, New American Standard Bible. But I'm putting it also in, a little bit into into my words. If they can translate it, uh, why can't I? Um, <clears throat> the Lord said to um, uh, said to him, "Who has made a man's mouth, or who makes him dumb or deaf, or seeing or blind? Is it not I, the Lord? Then go, and I will even be with your mouth and teach you." what you should say. But he said, Please, Lord, now send the message by whomsoever you will. Then the anger of the Lord burned against Moses. And he said, Is there not your brother Aaron, the Levite? I know that he speaks fluently. And moreover, behold, he is coming out to meet you. When he sees you, he will be glad in his heart. All right. Now Moses is having this fight with God. He doesn't want to go. He's coming up with all excuses. And he's saying, well, you know, I, 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 I got a speech thing. I can't talk. Well, you know what I like around people? I mean, you and me here is one thing. But a crowd, I mean, and kings. You know what it's like. I'm just gun, I just shake when I'm thinking about it. And he's going like, hey, look, Moses, this is God. Um, who is it that gives you the mouth? Who is it that, that um, puts you on the, the planet? Who, who, who makes a blind see or seeing blind? Uh, it's me. I am. I do it. This is God you're talking to. And Moses going, oh, look, oh, look, please, um, <laughs> Send the message by whoever you want to. Just don't pick me. Now the scripture doesn't say. Don't pick me. But the thought was obviously in Moses head. Because God's getting angry now. How many times do we hear people sitting there going like. You know I want to do anything. Anything just God you ask me for. And God's telling them. Well you need to send money. You need to give alms to the poor. <laughs> hey. I only make eight bucks an hour. I gotta pay my rent. I gotta feed my wife. I gotta look after my kids. There's the education. There's the bills. What am I going to do? Who is a God who owns the cattle on a thousand hills? Who made the gold and silver that's gone into our coins? Who is the great provider? The many breasted one. You don't get this teaching in New Testament churches because they don't have it in the New Testament. And a lot of the churches are drifting away because they've forgotten who their God is. Just like we drifted away and forgot who our God is. And it's time to come back to the reality here. I like to quote a, a, a very inspirational man in my life. Now, uh, some of the Jews out there are going to get a little offended with what i got to say here, but listen. i am listen to this black man preach. And sometimes what he has to say really goes in here. And his name is T.D. Jakes. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful orator in the Christian movement. And he has this expression, God, don't take you to it. Unless he's going to get you through it. Man, we got like 4,000 years of being taken to something and gotten through it. Who put us in Egypt in the first place? God. Who made sure we got into slavery? God. Who took a certain individual by the name of Moshe out of Egypt? So he could get a, a real close connection, God. Who is it that sent the poor chump back in? God. 
And even though Moses is, in, is asking for Aaron to speak up, when you get down to him, and he's standing there before Pharaoh, is it Aaron that says the thing? Not a peep comes out of this man. Not one word comes out of Aaron's mouth. It all comes out of Moshe because, you see, we have a power within. <coughs> he says not to take a scroll nor script in your journey in the New Testament. Because when we're delivered before kings, when we're delivered before the councils, when we're delivered before the congregations, be they Jewish or be they Gentile, Goyim, he will fill our mouths with what we got to say. And I've spoken in Jewish synagogues and I've spoken in Christian churches where whenever they'll open the door and give this little guy two minutes of time and when he's done there's not one person in that congregation that doesn't say what came out of this mouth did not come from God. So then I ask you it ain't me that's talking. There's a certain connection. You get me in a live group. But you put me in a congregation. Like what T.T. Jakes gets around. And you hear an orator that you just don't see here on this camera. Because this is, this is studio stuff. This isn't live. And I feed. There's something about feeding off of people. And Moses went in there. And... His education came back. He'd been raised in Pharaoh's court. The language came back. He thought he'd been there for way for so long. He probably couldn't remember Egyptian, he thought to himself. But the Egyptian words came back to him. He knew what to say, when to say, and how to say it. Rabbi after rabbi I have ever met, when they take this guy out, Know what to say. There ain't too much to argue with it. I've had them come into congregations where I'm speaking just to come and tear me apart. And I've prayed a prayer. And God so far in his humor has delivered me from their venomous mouth. Is it me? No. Because I go beyond myself. And I throw myself against the wailing wall. And I say, here am I, Lord. Here is my lips. Take me. Said me. You tell me. This little schmuck who doesn't understand the thing. What he should say. And when I minister out there. When you read my blogs. When you hear my heart. You go to some of the sites where I minister to. And I write and I post it out. Anybody wants a copy of the sites where I'm blogging, you are more free to write me at Bethesda Gospel at Excite.com and I'll send you the links to as many sites as you can handle and you can read through some of the stuff I've written. I comment not on the old, but also on the new. To so those which charge I'm only an Old Testament preacher, you'll need to hear the new stuff too. I have Old Testament scripture here, but there's New Testament values coming from these lips right now. Because there is no old and there is no new. God didn't have a hiccup. He didn't have a brain aneurysm and say, Poof, oh, oh, I can't remember what I was supposed to do. Let's start it all over again. He had it in his plan from the very beginning. Anybody who reads the scriptures who read in Genesis from Bereshit, you will know that he had a plan. And it's all in his hands. And he's going to work it out. We wound up in Egypt. You've wound up in Egypt. He sent a messenger two times now. And he says, come follow me into the wilderness. Until next time, shalom.